You know what sucks? Being an adult. Why didn't anyone warn me that in the next week I'm gonna have to pay rent, gas bill, electricity bill, water and sewage, health insurance, car insurance, and my renter's insurance? And it's also April, so I have to pay taxes. And I want to do none of that. I just want to run away and join the circus because that sounds like a lot more fun. The only problem is that I am not on the career track to join Cirque du Soleil. So I think step one to this is I have to figure out if I have any marketable circus skills. So to test things out, I went over to the Santa Monica Beach circus sea area to see if I had anything at all, if there was any hope for me. Now I'm scared to go up and I'm scared to go down. I'm gonna try to stick my foot through this loop that feels like it would impress Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> okay, I didn't think this far ahead. <laughs> okay, oh no, oh no. <laughs> ah! Oh, wow, gymnasts make this look a lot easier. What? Okay, oh, one, wow. two. Oh! Yeah, almost. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's not my answer. That's not my clean ticket into Cirque du Soleil, but I am not giving up hope because as a child, I got a pair of devil sticks at the Cirque du Soleil gift shop, and I, at some point, I did actually learn how to use them. So I have like a singular circus trick. Okay, so now my only problem is that I'm like actually not sure where devil sticks stack up in the grand scheme of circus skills next to even, say, juggling. And I'm sure that not every person who can juggle can just join the circus. And I think to do that, I need to like add a little spice of danger. So I'm gonna pull in my other skill, which is adding fire to things that really don't need fire. And then maybe I can impress a circus and get some job security because I'm an adult. I don't know, Cirque du Soleil. Okay, but for real, let's take a moment to talk about security. And this time I'm talking about internet security. Because as a young woman with a fairly public career, I am always shocked by how much personal information about me is just on the internet and I didn't consent to it being there. It's really scary finding out that this info is really easy to find and that anyone can find it. Data brokers sell our information to anyone who wants to buy. From our internet browser cookies to telemarketers and robocallers, data brokers are indiscriminately ruthless. It can put me and all of us at serious risk, but that's why I'm excited to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is Aura. Aura is an identity theft protection company that works hard to protect your identity online. They do everything in their power to protect me against everything that could be dangerous by opting out of telemarketers and junk mail for me, as well as monitoring my emails and passwords to make sure that they weren't involved in any data breaches. They also provide a VPN, password manager, malware protection, credit card and identity theft monitoring, and even internet parental controls. Everything you need can be found on the app or you can log onto a browser to try a free trial. Click the link below or scan the QR code. Go to aura.com slash Xyla for a free 14 day trial and see if your personal information has been leaked online. But first let's join the circus. Okay, so first I'm gonna make the, I don't know what these are called, but the, these ones. So, um, this aluminum rod I have is like almost long enough, so I'm gonna call it good. 36 inches, so half of that will be 18 inches, unless I failed school, which is entirely possible. I sanded the freshly cut ends of the rod so I don't slice my hands open on the burrs when I use them, and then I drilled an almost centered hole on the drill press for the anchoring screw, and that's gonna hold the Kevlar wicks in place. Who needs tap magic when you don't care about your drill bits? And now it's time to start wrapping the Kevlar wick. So Kevlar is commonly used for fire spinning because it's an aramid braided rope, which is basically a class of heat resistant and like really strong fibers that have a melting point higher than 500 degrees C. So it's great for, you know, like lighting on fire. And then to light it, I'm gonna soak the Kevlar in white gas, otherwise known as Coleman camp fuel, and then it'll just burn until it's out of fuel. So with the Kevlar neatly wrapped and drilled, I just put in a lathe screw to anchor it in place. Slowly but surely, I'm 
get there. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna join the drum corps. Next, I marked the next rod to drill out for the screw and repeated all the same steps as before, sanding the burrs off, wrapping the Kevlar, and then I drilled a hole through the Kevlar. And now a really fun trick for drilling through the Kevlar is actually to run the drill backwards and then it doesn't get caught up in the fibers the same way. And then when I hit the aluminum, I went back to forwards. Now I just have to not screw this up. Get it, screw. Now for the main center rod, I cut it down to the same length as the non-fiery double six that I'm used to. It just seemed prudent for them to match if this is a muscle memory based <laughs> skill. <laughs> Having learned some lessons on the smaller sticks, for the 2.5 inch Kevlar wicking, I decided to super glue it down to the stick just to make wrapping and screwing it easier. So the glue won't keep it attached once it heats up with fire, so this is just a temporary hold while I work on attaching the two screws to anchor the Kevlar in place. And once I have a thickness that would produce a really nice big flame, I cut it and then I decided to give a cleaner edge, so I put down another quick line of CA glue and folded the edge over. And this will theoretically protect the Kevlar from like fraying so it doesn't unravel. Put the in! Ah! Ah! Now for the other side, I did the exact same thing because it worked pretty well and you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> not perfectly centered, but it is through and it is engaged, so. Okay. Okay. With some tape on it, it'll be doable. The bonfire starts in like 30 minutes. All right, so I wanna keep the pattern because I actually use the pattern as a guide for where my sticks go. For the circus vibes, I tried to alternate each strip of grip tape for one of the sides and that proved to be super difficult because alternating stripes like of squishy tape and keeping it evenly spaced is magical and no one warned me how hard it would be. So for the next side, I pre-layered them together and wrapped from there and that was a lot easier. The alternating colors are totally worth it though because I think it like shows movement in a really cool way that emphasizes just how unbelievably qualified I am to join the circus. I then trimmed off the excess and added a finishing wrap at each of the ends to knit it up. And then I wrapped the hand sticks with grip tape, but I didn't need to have those alternate colors since I kind of want them to just blend in with the background so that we focus on like the main center double stick. Also, I didn't want to have to alternate colors again because that was really hard and very humbling. <laughs> Ooh, I can try it now. Oh, this is totally gonna be doable. We'll get a shot, at least one. And the last step was to apply this foam core tape that gives me like a nice handhold so that the hand rods don't slip out of my grip. And also it adds so much more comfort than I was expecting. And at first I thought that this was like very try hard and extra, um, but after actually using them, uh, it was really, really necessary. So if you're gonna do these, like make sure you also have hand grip tape. All right. It is time to go to the beach. All this wood, all the tree. Zyla going crazy with the bonfire. <laughs> Good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> ah! You got this. Woo! Oh. Yeah.